This material turns renewable energy upside down, literally. These are solar cells that produce electricity even at night. It sounds paradox, but it is technically possible. And here's why. Mercury, cadmium, telluride. This new material can convert thermal radiation into electricity. And the thermal radiation comes directly from the Earth even at night. We will take a closer look at exactly how this works in this video. And we also have to talk about the efficiency. So welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Otton. And in Germany, we say Los geht's. We have been harnessing energy from sunlight for a long time. In 2022, 15% of the world's renewable electricity was generated using solar power. Conventional solar cells make use of the photoelectric effect, something discovered by this German science guy. The principle involves electrons being released from a material by the energy of light, resulting in electricity. Unsurprisingly, this technology is limited to daylight hours when light is available. This makes it difficult to provide a continuous energy supply using photovoltaics. In addition to solar cells, some form of energy storage, such as batteries, is often required. A new type of technology is now being used to combat this problem. The technology is based on the principle of thermal radiation and it is intended to ensure that we can generate electricity from photovoltaics even in the dark. In principle, it uses the infrared radiation emitted by the Earth. Let's take a closer look at how exactly this works and whether it is really sufficient to generate energy continuously at night. So the physical basis for using photovoltaics at night is the principle of thermal radiation. This was described by Stefan Boltzmann in a law named after him. In it, he describes that every object whose temperature is above absolute zero emits electromagnetic radiation. The intensity of this radiation and the wavelength depends proportionally on the temperature. The Earth, with its average surface temperature of around 15 degrees Celsius, naturally also continuously emits radiation, mainly in the form of infrared radiation. At night, this long-wave infrared radiation is the main way in which the Earth releases energy into space. This release is part of the Earth energy balance. The Earth absorbs energy from the Sun and emits approximately the same amount again in order to maintain its temperature. Part of this energy emission is infrared radiation at night. And this energy flow has so far remained largely untapped. So to convert infrared radiation into usable electricity, we need special components. They are called thermophotovoltaic cells. The difference between these and conventional photovoltaic cells is not that great. Photovoltaic cells are optimized for the absorption of visible light, while thermophotovoltaic cells are optimized for the absorption of less energetic infrared photons. The basic process is also very similar. When a photon with sufficient energy hits the semiconductor material of the cell, an electron in the material is excited and released. The influence of internal and external electric fields then causes charge separation and an electric current to flow. It's a classic example of the photovoltaic effect, only applied to infrared radiation. And very importantly, the efficiency of this conversion of infrared radiation into electricity depends entirely on how well the emitted wavelength of the radiation matches the absorption of the semiconductor in the cell. And there is where we have something new. There's now a key material for these thermophotovoltaic cells, mercury cadmium telluride. What sounds like a tongue twister, at least for me, is actually nothing more than a semiconductor material consisting of mercury, cadmium and tellurium. And why exactly this combination of elements is so good for thermophotovoltaic cells can be explained by the so-called valence band theory. The band gap energy, so the amount of energy an electron needs to move from the valence band to the conduction band, can be adjusted via the proportion of cadmium. To understand the concept behind valence band theory, we can imagine the electrons around the atomic nucleus in different energy bands. The valence band is the energy band with the highest energy level, where most of the electrons are located. This can be thought of as the top parking level in a parking garage, where most of the cars are parked. Above this valence band is a conduction band. Initially, there are very few or no electrons in this band. However, in order for the material to conduct electricity, electrons must jump into this conduction band. In the conduction band, they are free to move and can contribute to charge transportation. The band gap energy is then exactly the energy that must be expended for an electron to jump into the conduction band. And this differs depending on the material. In insulators, the energy is very high, while in conductors it is very low. And in semiconductors, as is the case with our mercury cadmium telluride, it takes exactly as much energy as can be transferred by light or heat, depending on the wavelength. 
The band gap energy can be adjusted with a cadmium content so that it's optimally tuned for the absorption of emission of infrared radiation from the Earth. And what should I say, the power density achieved so far with mercury cadmium telluride shows promising first steps. According to a study by the University of New South Wales, a power density of 2.26 milliwatt per square meter was measured at a temperature difference of 12.5 degrees Celsius. This demonstrated the basic feasibility of photovoltaics using thermal radiation. Although the value is difficult to classify, it is something of a milestone in development and provides a basis for future research. And I know the number is really low and it is not like a breakthrough in at all, but this is basic research. In any case, this is an exciting development in energy generation. But there are still a few points that really need to be discussed. And before we do this, maybe you can bring up just enough energy to click on the subscribe button and activate the bell. I would be delighted if you did so. So let's come to the big part or the big hurdle of my videos. If you have seen any of my videos, I have always a section in my video, it's called the big hurdle, where we look at the limitations and the problems of a new technology. And today it's more like about open questions regarding the technology than actual criticism of the research. As I said, research into mercury cadmium telluride is currently proof of concept research. Therefore, it doesn't make much sense at this point to compare its performance with that of existing technologies. That would be a bit like comparing a novice directly against a professional athlete. Logically, conventional photovoltaic cells are significantly more efficient and above all produce more electricity. The focus of research is not yet on the application of the material, but it provides the foundation for this in the future. But one major problem that needs to be addressed even in this stage is mercury and cadmium are both toxic heavy metals. So this is something we have to have in mind, especially when it comes to the end of life of these systems and this might be a problem in the future. The second major problem is that the production of mercury cadmium telluride is very energy intensive. This will also drive the cost at the moment and there's still no data on the service life of the cells. However, in order to be able to assess the actual benefits of sustainability of the technology, this must definitely be taken into account because a lot of energy when producing them means that there need to be a lot of energy produced over the lifetime, so it makes any sense. Nevertheless, I find the approach extremely exciting. The idea of converting the earth night heat radiation into electricity has a lot of potential and of course it would not only work at night but also during the day. But the technology is still in its infancy. That means a lot of research and testing still needs to be done. Whether we will be producing photovoltaic electricity at night in the future is still written in the stars, so to speak. It would be desirable as the energy source is available anyway. And every renewable energy source we use brings us greater independence. But what do you think? Will we soon have photovoltaic cells that can also produce electricity at night through infrared radiation? I'm really curious to hear your opinion, so write it in the comments and also thank you very much for all the comments under the last videos that really motivates me to keep on going and sorry again for my bad English, I know some people get triggered with it. And if you want so, here's another video on my channel on the German science guy. It is about a German startup that actually became the most expensive startup in Germany and one of the most expensive ones in Europe and it is about drones. So check it out and I say goodbye or Auf Wiedersehen, how we say it in German, your Jacob.